All right. Um, uh, this has been a great day. I, most of the time, I feel crazy. But I feel far less crazy having these one, three wonderful people do similarly crazy things in front of me. Um, I think that's a beautiful thing about being a maker. You just sort of, you can go off in your own little hole and obsess about building things, and then you find other people are building similarly beautiful things. On the internet or from your computer? Just from the computer. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm really interested in not just making stuff, but how do you make making stuff easier for lots of people, um, if that makes sense. Uh, and actually, I'm going to continue to stall while I make this work. Um, I think the wonderful thing about the previous, what the previous speaker said is making things, if you're really going to make interesting things, it, it has to be collaborative and you need friends and partners. And I'm going to talk about a lot of stuff. I work with a wonderful set of people, including Nick Dragotta, an illustrator, and uh, have been having a fabulous collaboration for the last few years with a guy called Jack Backrack. Uh, he's a digital artist and computational geometer and things. And he and I were interested in, in how do you make a piece of software so you can make anything out of anything. Uh, and so we, we, built, we literally build our own software tools to make things, make, it, make, it, make themselves. So this is an elephant. We just literally stole or borrowed an elephant from the SketchUp library or Google's 3D warehouse. And then our, our magic algorithms just go and find you tell it whether you're going to make it out of fabric or whether you're going to make it out of wood or cardboard or metal. Uh, and the computer just finds the best way to cut the pieces for you. And then it produces cut files. You then just go and make them. Here we're doing a hammerhead shark. Um, and yep, there you go. This is sort of one of the, the files. So we li literally build our own digital tools so we can make unique things. And then maybe to bring a few of those things up. Um, Lights back on. Can we bring the lights up a little? Cool. And I guess in, in, as we're in the material thing, so we got, we got obsessed with cardboard, which I guess is wood. That's the only way I can claim any wood today. Um, it's reconstituted wood. So one of the simplest computing things you do is we just, again, we literally just get any 3D model and then just make all these things. I can pass those around, or someone can pass those around if you want to have a look. Um, I was specifically asked to bring an elephant rendered as many different ways as possible. So you'll see a few different elephants. Um, that piece of software you just did also lets us do cool stuff like that. So the process is really cool. So you, you just get this 3D model, and then you just say, make me the parts, and it gives you a PDF file, and then you just press cut on a laser cutter or a water jet, and then you spend about an hour with a pop rivet uh, gun in this case, and it sort of automatically helps you build it. Um, it was pretty fun. This is sort of some weird Japanese anime character. People can have a look at all of these if they like. I'm from that guy. We call that Pikachu. Uh, it's pretty fun. So I love all of those things. Um, but I also obviously have an obsession with uh, inflatable objects, even though they leak a little bit. You'll notice that the dinosaur is sagging. But quite literally, the same sort of tools that we make for ourselves, we use to go and make all of these different things. Um, and you sort of abstract out what the material is, and you just use really cool math. We, you, we might call it making stuff with math, or instead of do it yourself, we call it do it by algorithm. Um, which I kind of like. So the dinosaur is super cool. If I, I could inflate it and take one of the, you can actually ride on this guy. Um, the best thing we did, we once took it to, for a photo shoot to Dolores Park on a Sunday. And we ended up with a train of 33 and 4 year olds following us through the park. We had no idea. We actually had to cancel the photo shoot because it was just swarmed with, that's why it's leaking, because if you have enough 3 or 4 year olds, <laughs> um, that's what happens. Uh, so what we're really excited about actually is the cool thing about this, you know, this is a 12-pound brontosaurus. Um, so I re got really interested in that. And then we got into, well, can we actually make them into robots? And so I'm just going to do a couple of noisy things for a second. Um, and we'll see. 
Okay, so everyone probably thinks of a robot as something that does this, like because it all has joints and it's all sort of levers and 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 bearings and mechanisms. We're really interested in making robots that are just essentially bags of air or water, much more like real organisms are. You know, I'm a sort of bag of water. This is a bag of air, and so um, this is a world first. So something will go wrong, uh, but hopefully we will. It will. It doesn't really walk, technically. Walking, I think, means you move your center of mass, but it dances. <laughs> so we're on our way. Um, if you want to come up and see it, if you're in the back, yeah. come down the aisle. So this, this is super fun. Um, and it moves at the incredible rate of about 30 meters an hour. <laughs> so it, will, it, it can cr traverse this room in about, in about 40 minutes. Um, and you know, why, why do I do these things? I, I don't know. Sometimes you should just build things because they're, just because they're, they're beautiful or interesting. Um, and I actually find a lot, in, we're very playful in my office and and Jack and I were like, well, you know, it, well, okay, let me use a different analogy. So in, in computer graphics, the, to, to prove that you've done something cool, you have to render a, tea co a teapot. And that's considered the standard. The elephant is our teapot. And so <laughs> whenever we figure out how to make something in a new way, we make an elephant as the, as the teapot, um, which is super fun. But my, I, I have a two-year-old who can ride around on this. So he's the only guy who has seen it before this. Um, and it's slow right now, but we're hoping to make it trot pretty fast. Uh, so that's pretty fun. To show you some of the other tools we do, maybe we can bring up the... I, as you can see, my talk is completely disorganized. Um, so we also build simulation tools. So this is the, the model. That's what happens when you inflate it. That's so that we make sure that when we make these inflatables, they work. And this is the one I really love. We've just just recently got this working. <laughs> so what's really crazy, you should be able to do things faster on computer, and we had a race between some very smart guys doing the simulation and me and this wonderful guy called Pete Lynn just building it. And building it was faster than simulating it. Um, but that worked exactly once. So now they know how to simulate it, they beat you every time. So that's why I, I think that's sort of the best way to describe why I think the intersection of Computing and math with physical stuff is, is super fascinating because then all of these things become shareable in more interesting ways. Um, and you know, you don't like the elephant, you just cut it in half, you put a rhinoceros on the back end, and you can have your rhinophant or elosaurus or something, and you know, you can then make it very quickly. Um, so it's sort of, you know, we're thinking very much at a sort of a meta maker level. How do we help makers make everything? Um, I'd really love to be in a world where like Burning Man is something that happens once a year, which should be like that everywhere all the time. Lots of interesting objects and lots of people's personal expressions of, of things. Um, and that's sort of what we're thinking a lot about and, and, and trying to make happen in the world. Um, I could probably stop there or I can just show, show silly videos. This is what it looks upside down. That's how you test it. <laughs> that was the first time it wiggled. Yeah. It's not dead, as you can see. It's moving. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you, Sam.